Hey, my name's Scott. I'm a food photographer based in the UK and I specialise in advertising. I keep getting tagged in and sent these videos where people are showing all these hacks and tricks that people use to mislead the public with food photography. And frankly, they're just not true. So I'm going to dive into one of these videos and sort of explain to you what actually goes on. So starting off, we've got somebody drilling a pizza to a board, adding glue to mozzarella to get the cheese pull shot. Now the cheese pull shot's a really important shot in most pizzas. It's not particularly Italian, it's not traditional, but it is something that everyone likes to see. Um, in this particular instance, it doesn't look like cheese at all. I mean, it looks like a 1980s video or 1990s video, more, more likely. But this is not how we do it. You don't need to screw down a pizza to take a slice out. When you're at home, you just lift the slice up. You don't screw it down first. So that's complete nonsense. Also, it would go through an obscene amount of boards. However, we do a few little tricks to make this shot work. One of them is to microwave the pizza after it's been prepared because it makes the cheese go rubbery and that gives you more chance of getting a cheese pull. The other is that we cut the slice first and put a lattice of cheese over it to get the cheese pull. You can get it right without any of this, but it's hit and miss. It all depends on cheese placement. And rather than going through 50 pizzas, we just make sure that the slice we pull out is the one with the cheese pull. If you chop a pizza into eight slices, one of them will get a nice cheese pull. But the way that people want to see it is just one slice coming out from a full pizza, not as slowly pulling out one slice at a time until we've got three left and we finally get the cheese pull. It doesn't look appealing. So that's how we do that. Not with glue and mozzarella and screws. Doesn't look appetizing. Okay, so this is how we're getting the gooey liquid filling. That footage was sped up there where it fell down and that's apparently what the real one looks like. So, half true. We don't use some weird concoction to make this. That's not what we're doing at all. We do, however, add the concoction. And the reason is we have no idea where the liquid center is. It isn't in the center. It's haphazardly pumped in by a machine. There's no way of knowing. So often what we'll do is we'll cut it open, empty the cavity out, and then with a syringe, get some of the mixture and put it in exactly where we want it. And more importantly, when we want it. Chances are, when somebody opens it up and I take the shot, the creative director is gonna go, ooh, could we just, I'm not quite happy with the angle of this. And when it's already spilled out of where there's nothing we can do. Now, sometimes it just works. You know, you get some desserts where they're just, there's so much filling that it doesn't matter where you open it, it's gonna pour out. So sometimes we fake it, sometimes we don't, but when we fake it, somebody with a syringe and just, you know, some of the filling after we've emptied it out already. I like coffee, I'm drinking coffee right now. My coffee is pour over coffee, so it looks completely still. The other coffee I drink is an espresso, which has a crema on the top. What they're showing here mimics freshly poured coffee. If you have bubbles on top of your coffee, it's come from a cheap hotel machine where they've dropped it from a height creating bubbles. It is not part of what makes coffee pleasing to drink or to look at. This is just a no from the start because you don't want your coffee looking like this. The only coffee that looks like this comes out of an automated machine. This is a no right off the bat. We do not colour in fruit if it's the wrong colour. We just buy more fruit. If all the strawberries turn up and they're all not ripe, we just phone the supplier and go, the strawberries are no good, send more strawberries. There's no time on a shoot where you go, hmm, I've got an unripe strawberry here, I could go and get some more or I could colour it in with lipstick. Never gonna happen, I don't... If you're a photographer and you've done this, even way back in the 80s or 70s, let me know, because I'd love to know how it went. Now the next bit here is them spraying it all with hairspray. There is a slight truth to this. We do spray the fruit to make it look fresh and wet. Not with hairspray though. This here is glycerin and water. And the reason the glycerin's added to it is so it holds the water where we put it. So if we spray it on my hand here, if it was water, it'd just run down. But with glycerin, I'm not gonna do it because it'd be sticky. It sort of holds its place for a little bit longer. Not forever, but for a lot longer. The downside is if you accidentally eat the food that's been coated in glycerin, you'll need a very urgent trip to the bathroom. You should not eat glycerin in the concentration and quantity that we use it in. But it's just a spritzer and that's it. Nice and simple. I see a lot of these chicken ones and whether it's painting a raw chicken or blow torching it and painting it, it's not what we do. I've shot a lot of chickens, some ducks, pheasants. 
this, I mean, I'm sure when you see the final products here, it's not going to look like a cooked chicken because it's not just the color of chicken that makes it cooked, it's the consistency that, you know, let's skim back a little bit here. This isn't how chicken looks. The skin is limp, it should be crisp. They've only blowtorched a small amount of it, so some of it's burnt, some of it's raw. We don't shoot chicken like this. However, we will staple the chicken together, we will tie a chicken up, but we will cook it normally. You know, there's some people that say they inject mashed potato into it. So if you can inject mashed potato into a chicken, I'm very impressed with your handiwork. But it's just not what we do. We might roast six chickens and choose the best of a batch. You know, but it's all, these things take a long time. That's why we have a kitchen behind us here. If you want to get the shot right, it takes a long time. There's no quick, oh, here's a five minute hack. Instead of spending a day prepping it, you spend the day prepping it. That's just what it is. That's the job we do. That's how we do it. And that's how we get the results we get. So there are a lot of tricks that go into food photography, but they're not so much aimed to be misleading. It's more that we're trying to create the feeling of what the food is going to you know, look like and how you're going to experience it when you receive it at its best, rather than what it's going to look like 15 minutes after being sat on the side. And photography isn't a true representation of what the eye sees. So sometimes we have to do a few little tweaks to make it look in camera the same as it looks in real life. Now I know there's the whole you know, fast food restaurant, you go in there, Beautiful photographs, limp burger. And that is frustrating. But I've also had really good burgers in fast food restaurants where they've come out looking pretty close considering you know, someone's made it who's making hundreds of burgers now rather than a professional food stylist. They look pretty good. So I think a lot of it comes down to quality control. It comes down to the staffing, the way the staff are treated, the way the staff are paid. You know, Paying somebody minimum wage isn't gonna get you the same burger as paying somebody a lot more money. Um, so it is tough, it, is, it can be misleading at times. And you know, I've been there in the restaurant and been disappointed when my food's turned up. But it's not as photographers trying to trick you. We make the food with exactly what the clients have. Everything's made to make it look at its best and also to show you what's in there. So there's a lot of it saying, you know, cakes have cardboard put into them to show you the different slices and all the rest. They don't. We cut them open, we use tweezers, scalpels, even more tweezers. And then we very carefully clean the cake out. So what we want to show you is not that, look, when you cut a cake, it comes out looking perfect. We want to show you all the different layers in the cake so you know what it's going to taste like when you eat it, not what it's going to look like. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. We're shooting for taste, but I think sometimes it's portrayed that we're shooting for what it's going to look like. And that's not always the case. If you cook the same cake and you just slice it down and serve it straight away, it's not going to look the same as if we show you what's in there. Likewise with a burger, when you go to McDonald's or Burger King, you don't see all the sauces very carefully draped at the front, but in the photograph you have to because you need to know what's in the burger. Otherwise, you don't know whether it's got relish or, you know, that picture there tells you everything that's in it. So that's my thoughts on the matter. I hope you enjoyed this. This is my first ever YouTube video where I've actually been in the video. And if you do like it, I'm going to be doing some more of these and hopefully getting better. This was my third take because for my first one, I didn't turn the mic on. My second one, I had something in my beard for the entire video. And this one I'm hoping is going to be the one. So do subscribe and I'll have another video next week.